Um, moving on to transparency, I think you'll be aware of um, the case of, of Claire Page, a mother in London, uh, who was denied access to materials used to teach sex education to her 15-year-old. Um, for the benefit of the rest of the committee, uh, the lesson was provided by an external uh, charity which had some very inappropriate, explicit links on its website. Um, she made a Freedom of Information uh, request to see the materials, but was declined on the grounds of uh, commercial secrecy for the charity. Uh, she referred the case to the Information Commissioner's Office, but they upheld the school's choice uh, to keep the lesson secret. She's now lodged an appeal. Now, the DfE says that parents should be given every opportunity to understand the content of relationship and sex education, and schools regularly send home textbooks and, and worksheets that are written by third-party commercial companies. So do you think parents have a right to know what children have been taught, particularly in contested areas like RSE? I'm completely with... DfE on this one. I do think in, in these difficult and contested areas to withhold material from parents um, is, 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 is worrying and it, commercial confidentiality may have, may have stood, stood up to the, the Information Commissioner's legal test mm -hmm. um, but nevertheless as a matter of principle I would expect every school to be comfortable um, show, showing its par parents what, what they're teaching. Um, and you would expect the schools to uphold that important parental authority over being the first teacher of values and, and um, you know, contested issues like these? Well, I think th this is where impartiality comes in. I think, I th I think one of the hardest things um, for an individual teacher, say, who feels something particularly passionately and strongly is to distinguish between, be be between th the, the things that are universally accepted and the things that are... are deeply deeply contested in society and taking responsibility um, for, for, for res respecting that distinction. Um, on RSE, um, the, one, one of the things that I think creates, that sometimes creates difficulty is that it's structured, um, as is the, the underlying anti-discrimination legislation, for example, that some of it relates to, in terms of the minimum that schools must do there's nothing in it to help mm. schools understand how, what's the furthest they should go. So, so, so it can appear as though the various mechanisms are encouraging s schools to go, to go ever further. I have advised at least one Secretary of State and possibly more um, that it'd be extremely helpful if the guidance could be, could be iterated um, to place some limits on what schools should reasonably teach as well. But um, I don't think, I, th I think that was... Uh, that conversation, I think, was just pre-COVID, and I think it got slightly displaced by... The words age-appropriate. Yes. So yes. There's an awful lot of the word yeah. in this space. Age-appropriate age carries a lot of yes. weight, and case studies and examples can do, <coughs> do a great deal. Um, as I think the political impartiality guidance has some extremely helpful case yes. studies, for example. But, but